All right, so let's talk about this lead story in today's Observer, the AEW investigation. Man, that, that story was, was so, um, it's just difficult. It was a very difficult story for me in a lot of ways, you know, just because, um, you know, I get, I guess for the last month, I've kind of been covering this thing and it was almost, it's not a finality because I, I am certain that more and more, some, some of it stemming from the story will keep coming up. But it was sort of the, you know, you always had hope that somehow, uh, every, you know, cooler heads would prevail. You know what I mean? I mean, the best thing for the business, obviously, is is two strong companies. And it's not saying that AEW is 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 done without Punk or anything like that. They're not. But, you know, he was their biggest draw. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but he was. And, you know, he could be he could he could be very very valuable. And things happened. And, you know, it's 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 bad because again in this story i kind of had to go back to the start and you know which is months and months ago and because of that it's kind of like i see like each this each step that happened and it's like um you know it all i you know it, it all in in many ways shouldn't have happened and but it just did and it could have been you know i mean i think that there's ways it could have been stopped early on when it got kind of where i knew it was serious i even you know said we got you know you got to stop it and then it, it you know it didn't stop i mean we talked to tony the night before i mean yeah. i was going through my notes it's like we talked to tony the night before this all happened and we all knew i mean no, nobody knew that this was going to happen but we knew that there was that there was a potential problem and mm -hmm. even then we didn't think the problem would be this bad and, you know, the result of the problem is um, it's been because it's so public uh, and it's been a real I think it's been very, very negative to the company in a lot of ways. And, and to everyone involved, there's no one in there's no one who's involved in this story that ha it has not been negative to, you know, so um, I guess it's it's just an unfortunate part of life. Yeah, I, I want to ask you about that night because us being there with him then the night before and him kind of leaning into the reality and the real conflicts with some of these guys. Well, you know, that's the, the, the thing is, is, is that, you know, I mean, he wasn't wrong because I mean, I remember all the stuff, like whether it was Memphis, which did this all the time, or, you know, Matt Hardy and edge, if you remember those type of stories, you know, really often work really real. Brett and Sean is the, is the one that we always talk about. They really work well for the fans. And that, and that I think is one of the things is like, I'm, well, as I'm writing this and I did write it, I was thinking like, you know, that, and I mean, in UFC, like Jesus, you know, like what John Jones and um, <laughs> DC, I mean, that was totally real. I yeah. mean, some people may think that some of that was put on and it was not put on. And um, you know, it, it um, Quentin Jackson and, um, and uh, Rashad, you know, things like that. It, it, you know, um, you know, you know, I mean, a lot of the Connor stuff was put on, but, but a lot of the UFC big grudges were, were not, you know, the ch chail stuff and stuff. Right. But a lot of the grudges were not put on and it made for, you know, very intriguing, uh, combat and, um, and in, but it's, it's worked in wrestling as well. And, you know, there's, I started, as I was writing this, I started thinking about, you know, like, you know, punk and FTR against, Omega and the Young Bucks and all these things that you could do, but it's not going to happen. And, you know, people just wouldn't work with each other anymore. And, um, you know, it did. It, there's a line of demarcation and they they broke through that line on on September the 4th and maybe before that. But certainly on September the 4th, they did. The UFC example is is very interesting, but at least in the UFC example, these guys are building up, selling the fight at the same time frustrated with each other, but then they actually get to go and have a fight and, and let it all out. Yeah. When in this scenario, you still have to sort of go with, you know, what the booker says and who's supposed to win. And so it, it's a little bit of, of a different way. I don't, I don't know. Can, can you blow off that steam uh, when you, when you do it in wrestling? You know, in the old days, you know, blew, you blew off the steam by getting, making a paycheck. Off yeah. Of getting it. money, you know, you get money off of it and kind of like you work together to, um make it look like you hate each other and you may even still hate each other but by working together and making it good you know you but you're right it's a different kind of blowing off the steam um it, it's not exactly but again in wrestling people have done it for you know probably 100 years 
you know, as far as like people who genuinely didn't like each other and, uh, you know, made money off of it because um, that it was just that's kind of how you did it. And, um, you know, there's again, I mean, it's like, you know, we can all we can all sit here and say what would have been the right thing for business. But sometimes that doesn't work in business. And, um, you know, it's just what happened. And, you know, it's like I um, I was really um, the finality of it kind of was was sad. It's sad for a lot of people. I've seen people, you know, that have that have contacted me and they're just kind of like, you know, they, they 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 knew it wasn't a work, but they really wanted it to turn into a work and do that that thing, those kind of ang- that kind of an angle. And, you know, they couldn't get they couldn't get it together and it broke through the line. And I, I, um, you know, that whole night was, you know, it was a, a a bizarre night. And, uh, I guess historically it's going to be one of those nights that we talk about, uh, for a long, long time. And, uh, people probably debate, God, hope it's not like Brett and Brett and Vince. (laughs) Well, but (laughs) can it, can it be though? For a hundred years, especially I just went through Brett and Vince basically, uh, earlier this week, you know, um, you know reliving that so yeah i don't i don't know if it can be though because there were so many different elements in the brett and vince stuff where brett's uh on camera brett's on a microphone all this stuff is recorded it happens that the 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 end result happens on we- pay-per-view which is also weird that 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 it that so not all of it obviously made camera or or made audio but an incredible amount did and on this one you know, the one thing is, is that we all know something happened, but there's no video of yeah. it. And um, so that, you know, uh, you know, means that people are going to, um, you know, I mean, look, there's going to be different versions of what happened. And, uh, you know, I mean, and that that's going to end up being a reason that we will. I'm going to guess that we're going to hear about it for a long, long time, because as people tell their different versions, the other people are going to get mad at those versions. Mm -hmm. And um, right now everyone's supposed to be quiet, but um, you know, how long do you think that's going to last, man? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to last. The other thing is though, is um, you know, the, the one thing that's sort of a similar thing where people are going to have their own stories is the Brett and Vince fight, right? There were two different versions of, of what happened Vince... And there is no video of that. Right. And there's no video. Yeah, they did. Brett, Brett, Brett kicked him out of the room, which I think in a sense, well, I'm not even in a sense. I, I think Brett really would have loved for that video, you know, for that for that to actually be filmed. But my God, could you imagine? Um, but yeah, I mean, we had two different stories. We got Vince saying he sat there and just let him punch him for free. And Brett saying, you know, it was absolutely ridiculous that that happened, that, that it happened like that. So, you know, um, uh, you know, but to, Tony seems to Tony seems to be trying to make sure this stuff doesn't become like wrestling lore, right? They, the investigation, they haven't talked about it. They didn't tell the audience what happened to the elite. Um, Tony tried to keep it as quiet as possible, which, which in some ways, you know, obviously, obviously I was critical of that because yeah. not that you tell people everything, um, but I think that the fans had the right to know, even if it's just like, these guys are suspended um, until further notice and just say that. Um, but then, yeah, I know then people want to know more, I, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's a tough situation, but I do think that they, you know, it, it, it made it tough. You know, it's like, we didn't know when the investigation was going to end. We didn't know anything. And um, I mean, we, you know, and every, you know, there was the, the you know, it, it, the, the company should have at least said that these guys are suspended. If nothing else. I, I just think that, it should have been handled, you know, like, look, you went through the same thing at the same, same time with the warriors. Yeah. And, and, you know, just tell them the difference in that one and the, <laughs> and the similarities. Well, uh, so I guess that there's two versions of that story though, because it was reported that a fight had happened and the team, ha- tr- they didn't really get out in front of it, but they knew that they had to make a statement about it. They were very upset that, there was information out there. So they wanted to keep it in the locker room as everybody does. Yeah, the people always want to do that. Right. But then once the video got out, they had to be even more forward about what happened because it was no longer like, cause you could, you know, sort of like the, the Vincent and, and uh, Brett fight. 
you can kind of in your head try and think about what what happened and the warriors the way that they were talking about it i thought at least it was like oh you know draymond may have slapped him or or just kind of punched him once and then it was broken up and he did only punch him once but he punched him very aggressively and it was way more uh aggressive than i even could visualize in in my head and so once that came out they had to discuss it because it's like you know basketball players are, are much more famous than, than professional wrestlers of course but you have draymond who's this really uh he, he's going to be a figure in basketball for a long time because he's going to do media. He's already got podcasts and stuff, but he's also somebody who in the past has had his own issues where, you know, the Warriors lost a game because he uh, sort of, he got mixed up with LeBron and he's the one who got suspended. So he's kind of got this reputation. And so for him to be the one that punched his teammate, like that's a, that's a thing that's probably going to be, uh, a story for for years uh, years and years uh, down the line too be just because we have that video of it but yeah the warriors had to get out in front of it they had to talk about it they didn't suspend him though which i think surprised a lot of people and i bet you if they didn't have a ring ceremony on opening night he would have probably been suspended for at least the first game and, and possibly more but because that was like a ceremony uh, for the team, they didn't. They, I don't think they wanted to suspend him. So yeah, it, you know, they're just different. Uh, thank, I guess, thankfully for AEW, there's no video of what happened, right? Like that came out, so everybody can, you know, look at it like the Zapruder film. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I guess I get. I mean, it would, it would, it would answer questions, but again, I mean, it would still end up where people would take sides and everybody would everybody in some case in some in some position would end up being hurt by it you know you know um but they were anyway so i have a question about uh, you wrote that some uh, some wrestlers refused to work with punk and i thought that was so interesting because it was if, it was to me too i yeah. guess if you're if you're on top you can you can say that and, and and be okay, but if you're somebody who's kind of up and coming or maybe in the middle, well, you can't get away with it if you were if you were if you were in the middle. There's only right. a couple of people who could, yeah, because you would want to work with him because that means you're working closer to the top and more visibility. He's the most popular, or I don't know about popular, but he's the most bankable person they have. So yeah. you would want to 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 work with him in that instance. So I guess without knowing who said that, like we can sort of figure that it had to be people who who were you know already uh, on top who could make that statement because i just can't imagine somebody who's really looking to to grow in that talent division saying ah i'm not gonna work with cm punk like that's who you want to work with because it, it gives you so much right right yeah uh okay so another thing about it was the the line about punk uh being afraid of hangman shooting inside well, the ring you know it's funny on that one because i i you know he 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 you know that's i i think that there was maybe concern and you know wrestling there's always some paranoia in wrestling i mean it's like the idea of being afraid of a fight um as mo I, I don't I, I think that people may like oh you know what uh, whatever whatever and you've seen him fight and you've seen blah 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 but you know it may just be concern and also you know I mean the one thing with wrestling is is that you put a lot of trust in the other guy and if you put yourself in a position to be caught and they don't catch you and there's wrestlers there's not a, a lot of them but I'll always remember um again this is a tangent and I'll get right off of it but um I don't know if you know but but years ago I think it was um uh, a Starcade or a Halloween hat. I think it was a Starcade, but it was a WCW um, uh, show where um, there's a tag match. It was like, you know, Incredible Partners Tag Team Tournament or something, right? And Mike Graham and Liger, Jushin Liger, were on opposite sides. And Mike Graham, you know, didn't catch Jushin Liger on purpose because, you know, he didn't, you know, whatever, you know, he just didn't. And it's like, you, you, you can do that and you can just, you know something very you know like if you're you know you you can do that 
And you can even do it in a way where people don't notice and the other guy can get hurt. And you don't want that. So I think that there was, I'm, I'm not like, uh, to me, the, the idea that he was concerned, I mean, it's like, I, I, you know, in, in the sense of like with Adam, it's like, I, I would, uh, you know, Adam doesn't have a rep for anything like that, but you know, again, it, it should have been, you know, it, again, it's one of those things that should have been quelled, you know, I mean, they, you know, it's, which is easy to say people don't, you know, I think a lot of people don't like confrontation. I think we all in a sense don't like confrontation sure. and, and uh, you know, they should have gone in there and, you know, punk did afterwards. I mean, I do know punk went to him and you know, what was that all about? And they probably should have said, Hey, you know, whatever. And don't worry, you know, we're, you know, wrestling's built on trust and you have to have that. And the idea that he was concerned, um, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, he, he, he may have been, I like some people want to take it. Oh, he was a chicken of a fight. And it's not about a fight. <laughs> it's not about a fight. That's the thing that people completely miss. It's about trust and the yeah. ability to like, you know, you want, you want go in there on a move where the other guy needs to catch you, or you're going to be picked up by the guy and he's going to throw you and you don't want to get hurt. And you don't want some guy who, for whatever reason is mad at you in a sense that would be unprofessional about it um, in the ring, because you can, again, you're giving the guy your body. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, again, for the most part, I mean, I remember like the whole thing, you know, again, Brett and Sean, which, which is a situation I know pretty well, um, you know, all through, you know, even though they ended up having a blow up at the end too, you know, which was, you know, obviously one of the bigger stories in history wrestling, but they would always sit there and, 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 you know, through all the words and all the mistrust and things like that. And each one got mad at the other one. It was always like in the ring, they were professional. I mean, if you watch any Brett and Sean match from 97 um, and they're in the ring together, you know, it, it's, it's, you turn off that, that dislike. I mean, the only fight they had was the fight in uh, whatever city that was. I think it was new Haven, but whatever the, the, the famous fight, they mm -hmm. had the famous fight. And of course the difference is in, in their famous fight, nobody got suspended, you yeah. know, they, because they're top guys and they wanted to keep the two top guys. And it's, I don't know if you say that 1997 and 2022, it's 25 years apart. It's completely different. Um, you know, I don't know what it says. Um, but I mean, that one, that one, did have a fight even after the fight. And I think that's one of the things with this one was after the Brett and Sean fight. And Sean did say, I'll never work with him again. And I'll never work with Davey. I'll never go in. And, and, and eventually he did. But at first it was, I'll, I'll never work with any of those guys, unsafe working environment. He was really upset about, you know, the, that, that, um, but in the end they did work together and, um, there was no unprofessional between the two until the finish of the match in Montreal, which I guess you could say was one of the more unprofessional moments in, in wrestling, you know, and, and, and people will have their arguments over who was, you know, obviously, you know, I, I go with, I go with the contract, but some people won't. And, you know, it's been something that's been debated for forever. And probably once this new DVD is on, maybe, it'll, maybe there'll be another run of debates over it, but whatever, that's a different situation. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that, by the way. It was a great conversation. I thought, I thought, I, you know, there's things that, you know, um, I mean, I, I, to me, again, it was me and Brett talking, but my mentality was, is that I was there to just kind of guide Brett and, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, be kind of a, someone in between. I was not uh, taking over the conversation. I was very much, this is Brett. Brett did probably, you know, 80% of the talking. I didn't interrupt him. Or, or maybe I did, but, but, but not much. I mean, my, my mentality was, is that like, this is Brett's show and I'm just here because Brett asked me to be there and, and the people there asked me to be there. And we just, someone who knew what the story was and, and, uh, you know, not, he didn't, I don't think he wanted to work with somebody who was, um, you know, didn't know the story and didn't understand the story. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, we had, it wasn't, thought... it wasn't like an in-depth interview that I would do if he was on our show it was very, very different. It was, this is just Brett talking about a lot of different subjects um you know from vince to bill goldberg to everything and and you know um i don't think that uh the only thing that i maybe pushed back was on bill and brett went really hard on bill again even hard, harder than harder, maybe even harder because um you know obviously i like bill but you know i you know brett's you know very very bitter about bill yeah you know? i mean that's just the reality and you know the story i mean you know bill ended brett's career and and uh you know brett had a lot a lot of issues and he 
you know, it's 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 hard when you look back on all the money he could have made and all the matches he could have had, and you know the, you know, um, it's just one of those unfortunate things that happened in wrestling. Yeah, I mean, we haven't talked so long that when you said this on uh, Wrestling Observer Radio, it was news to me. I didn't even know. I didn't know that you had that conversation. So, yeah, well, you know, I mean, it actually came about in like a, about a forty-eight hour window. So, like, nobody, nobody knew. I mean, like, literally, nobody knew. They asked me. They asked me on one day, and it was like I think it was two days later. We uh, we were doing it, you know. So I had very, you know, very much no time to prepare. And thankfully, it was a subject that I literally didn't need to prepare. I mean, yeah, we were, yeah. You know, I mean, it was like, you know, now that I look back on on that, there's, you know, you you remember things and you forget things, right? From 25 years ago. But my God, for whatever reason, and I. I maybe because it's been drummed in my head for so many years. I do. I remember everything from from that story. I mean, just oh god. So, Paige was Paige wasn't part of the investigation, right? I don't. I mean, I don't know, but I wouldn't think so. Only because he wasn't there, and the investigation wasn't about that. You know, he. You know, he. he, he the reason those guys were there, you know, is is um. The Young Bucks were supposed to come out to do the scrum with with Kenny, um, you know, later. That's why they were still there. And then, you know, they got the word of what happened. And, um, I, you know, for different w- re- ways they did. I mean, they weren't watching it, but they got the word. And that led to, you know, what happened. So the reason why I asked that is because he's a big part of this story while not being part of the investigation and 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 very unwilling and very unwitting part you know if you noticed from day one Paige has never said a word about it at all and that's kind of what i was wondering is if i I wonder if he ever i mean i I don't know he's ever gonna have his side at some point i'm pretty sure i mean it's i i have been in contact with with Paige, and Paige is you know i don't want to like put words in his mouth that he didn't say at all but what I can say is like, you know, we've never, it's, it's never been something. I mean, it's, it's probably the main reason we've never, we haven't done a show with him because, you know, I, I was trying to line up a show with him and then this happened. And then once this happened, it was kind of like, you know, we, it's something like, it's not a subject that he would, you know, he does not want to talk about it. He's, he feels, um, I think he feels sad that it happened. You know, it's like, I don't know you know, mad, unhappy, all the emotions, you know, all I know is that it's, it's been one of those things where I don't want to talk about it. And just sad that it happened is I think, I think that's his feeling, you know, again, I don't want to put word, like I said, put more words in his mouth because he's told me very few words. Yeah. It's very clear. He doesn't want to talk about it and he wish it never happened. Yeah. It just seems that there's one side of the conversation in which he's involved. And I, I'm not sure if his side of the, of, of the whole thing is, is out there. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but that's I don't, why think, I, I, don't I don't, I don't think his side's out there at all because he just wants it. You know, I think, I think a lot of the guys um, at this point really want it to go away, but I don't think it will because some of them probably, I don't think do want it to go away. So lat in last week's issue, you you mentioned the buyout or the possible buyout. Yeah. And and when I hear buyout, I think, oh, he's got to be taking less of his contract to agree to not be contracted to AEW, or else you just sort of just let him be contracted the whole time. Is that sort of your uh understanding of, of what a buyout means for this situation? I thought it was again, you know, again, it's one of those things where number one, Tony's not going to talk about it ever. Okay. You know, and I, I, you know, I mean, he's not, um, and people think that, that, you know, he's telling me stuff, believe me on this subject, he is not going to talk about it. And, um, my feeling was, is that that he wanted a break, you know, that, you know, we can't do business is what I believe Mm -hmm. because of that punk had however long left on his contract. And I don't know how long, but obviously it's a big, big money deal. You know, I don't know the exact figures, but I know the range and it's a big, you know, it's, it's very big money. And, um, because of that, you know, I think that they just had to come to, I think they wanted to come to an agreement and also an agreement like he had in the sense of, you don't talk about it at all publicly. And I won't, 
and he won't, you know, I mean, I know he won't. And um, again, with punk, you know, I, I couldn't tell you what he will or won't do. Um, but I, you know, I mean, I just think back to the Cody thing, you know, where the whole, you know, I mean, again, and, and on that one, obviously I know both sides and um, both sides were the same. Um, you know, we've made a promise. We're not going to talk about it and we're not going to break the promise. I mean, that's, the, that's essentially the situation when it comes to, you know, both, you know, I've talked, you know, we would talk for over and over and over about Cody when the thing happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, I know, you know, the timeline and I know that they were talking about a renewal and I know that it, Cody made the decision and, uh, what, you know, whatever, um, I mean, there's a lot of people I put it this way. I would think that, that most people who are making speculation have no idea what it was about because I only know, and I would probably know as good as almost anyone who's not directly involved that it was, you know, that they, that they were talking about still doing business, um, law after the contract was over. And then one day Cody was just like, I remember he just said, it just, it was time to leave the territory. And I kind of like, kind of, kind of hit me. He goes like, yeah, you know, he grew up, look, the son of Dusty Rhodes, Dusty went from territory to territory and he just felt it was time to leave the territory. And, you know, again, I mean, he got hurt, but until he got hurt, you know, I mean, it was the right decision. And, um, that's all, that's all you say. It's like, you know, you, you know, going back and forth and things like that. I mean, it can be very beneficial to people. And in his case, it was the right move. It was the right business move for him at the time. And uh, so you've got to just say, hey, he made the right move. So that leads me to the the question of if Punk would either want to go back to WWE or if WWE would want him. I would imagine WWE would, would want him. Uh, but, you know, there there's obviously some frustration on both sides there from from the last time but man that that's the big question right it's is a big, it's a big, a big question yeah and again it's like you know that's going to end up being nick Khan and paul levesque probably more paul levesque than nick Khan as far as uh, um, um decision and look you and i can sit here i wrote you know what based on what i wrote you know you can debate it it's like will the fans like it yes did vince mcmahon teach paul levesque that you do what's the right thing for the fans. Yes, he did. I know that. Uh, Vince has always been like that. You know, no matter people will think that he's not. I know that. Uh, you know, I've talked to Vince about that. You, you know, you 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 know, you do something that you don't really personally want to do if you think it's the right thing for the fans. I know that some fans are going to go, well, "Why do you do this and this and this and this?" You know, and it's like, but that is his his motif. That is his his idea, and and Paul did learn that. But there are also people where sometimes you you just feel, you know, by by the track record, you look at the track record and you go like, is this something that we want in our dressing room? And again, you know, they'll talk and or they won't talk. And I can't give an answer. I mean, um, because I, I don't know. I um, I only know with wrestling that when you say someone's got a bad track record and no one's going to take them. Um, someone always takes them always i mean like punk if, if if it doesn't happen with punk he is the i won't say he's the only guy it would have happened to but he would be the exception of the rule because you know look at everyone that you said would never go back there or they would never take back from bill goldberg and all of them and uh warrior you know and they all ended up you know you get older and you change and all this so it's just like um time heals all wounds you know it's like uh I mean, that's, that's, that was the thing. It's like, I, you know, this whole thing, when, when it was going down until this last week or week or so, I mean, I, th my thought was, just, Hey, the guy's got a torn tricep. He's had surgery. He's not gonna be around for six months anyway, or, or longer. And it's like, at that point, maybe everyone calms down. He comes back and, you know, they do an angle out of it, but, um, you know, obviously, <laughs> obviously that's not going to happen. <laughs> uh, so but that's a fan thing. I'm not again like the wrestlers you share the dressing room. Yeah. Um if it was one incident, I think that they could have worked through it. I think that that the thing that I think was 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 bad was the you know the scrum where he pretty much 
gave the impression that you know that they were a second division team Mm -hmm. and i think that those guys who are first division players on second division team um didn't appreciate that uh that nature of it and but again that's words and you can work through it and 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 everything so um but uh you know i mean look this this the story's there that's all hey if you're a big fan of wrestling observer radio we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.